I guess you're going to hear them all. So, welcome to worship. It is a beautiful day. So, let's begin with one announcement. In the month of July, Ken will be on vacation for about three weeks. He said he, he will love it. <laughs> he has not taken a vacation for a very long time, so I think this is a time that he needs that break, and we're grateful for his ministry. Go for it, Ken. And then next Sunday, yeah, the announcement is already up there. So the group will be with us next Sunday. They'll be giving us few music, few number. All right, are there joy or concern out there? Birthday, anniversary, anyone? Any good news? All right. Well, if not, then we will like to begin the service. How might it? Please stand as you are able. How holy and how loving is the God we worship. As we find ourselves united in Christ, let us come together in praise. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, against you and you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, clean us from our sin and take away our guilt, creating us a new heart and give to us the right spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, love us even when we were dead in sin and make us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May the Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, 
Almighty God, root of all hearts, you call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. first reading is from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another. Take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, 
and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I have warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to be ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village as they were going along the road. Someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nets, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my house. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the block and looks like it's fit for the kingdom of God, the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. On this day, I would like to talk to us regarding the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. I wonder, even mind sharing a little bit, what kind of fruit or fruits that you like to eat? Let's just share it out. Oranges, cherry, blueberry, apple. You can tell that all of us like different kind of fruit. We all don't like the same. And those in the scientific world or those in the medical world have told us that fruit is good for our body. And I think that is true. They say, well, fruits are a good source of minerals and vitamins. So the stress and importance 
of eating fruit or taking care or doing something about fruit. So fruit is good. So for every good fruit, it got to be a good tree. It got to be a good source. So for us, remember Jesus said, Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you. So when we look at fruits today, and we look at us abiding in Christ, we need to focus on that. But here's the problem. Paul wrote to the church of Galatia or the churches at Galatia at the time. They were focusing their mind on the law, L-A-W. Now he tried to remind them the law is good, but you cannot focus on the law on it. Because if you break one of the Lord, you are guilty of breaking the rest of them. Then he brought out a teaching. He said, because of Christ, Christ has set you free. So what should you do? Because freedom is not that easy. For us, we receive freedom through Christ. And he told them, Christ has already set you free. But be careful how you use your freedom, not as indulgent. But use your freedom to glorify God. If you look in the world today, people are looking for freedom. People are fighting for freedom. Even the great United States over the weekend has been tough for this nation. Freedom is not that cheap. It's expensive. It's costly. The great United States got her freedom from Great Britain. They now want to be told what to do, but got freedom. So Christ said in the church in Galatia, you have freedom. Christ has set you free. So you set your mind on that freedom. In verse 13, so he also told them, for you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. And part of that freedom is to love God and to love your neighbor. Love your neighbor, love one another. Then he turned their hearts to say, if you are in God, if you are in Christ, the flesh also come. But don't live by the flesh. Live in the spirit. When you are in God, the fruit come from God and not from yourself. So he began to name Ask them and name some of the fruits that they need to live by. And just like all of us, that we need to live by the fruit of the Spirit. So you store the first fruit that you need to have is to love. As you know, God is love. God is love. Love, love, and love. It's love that made Christ to go on the cross for you and myself. While we were yet sinner in Romans 5, it says, while we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. And First Corinthians tell us about the different kinds of love. That love is not envious, love is not boastful. And because of love that God sent his son Jesus Christ to die for you myself. So he said, love must be in the heart. There were problems that the church in Galatian faced, and he was telling them, let love abide in you. Because love will can make you to do anything you wish to do for another person. Besides love, he also tended to have joy. This is an inward joy. It's a joy that God gave. To say, live in joy. Because it is that joy that even when the circumstances, when things are very difficult, it is joy that will keep you going. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
Jeremiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It is that joy that makes you, when you wake up in the morning, you say, yes, God, I know I'm still joyful. We be made endure at night, but joy comes in the morning. It is that joy that going by feelings is a joy that comes from within and know that God is there for you because joy will make you to do things that you want to do. A joyful heart. So he said, besides being joyful, also talk about the peace. Remember, the, the, the disciples were struggling and they had turmoil and their masters were leaving them. And he told them, I give you my peace. The peace I give you, not as the world gave. Because when, a God, when the world gave you peace, it's for a short time. When God gave you peace, it's an everlasting peace. It lasts for a longer time. And that peace comes from God. So he said, peace is what you need. Because peace will give you that inner feeling. The peace will say, I want to live with my brothers and sisters. Peace will say, no matter what this person may have done to me, I still have the peace of mind. It's a peace that the devil wants to sometimes take away, but when you allow that peace to be with you, it takes you for a good time because you have the peace of mind. The peace don't make you to look after others. The peace makes you to look inward and look up to God. Say, so let the peace of God that passes all on us and keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. We got to keep looking at that peace of mind. When the peace is gone, it's difficult. We know nations have fought each other because they want a peace and they cannot get it. But where there's peace, there's liberty. When there's peace in the family, liberty is there. When peace is in the heart, there is liberty. When peace is in the heart, you can sleep well because you have that peace of mind. Because you know where you are going and you know the God that gave you that peace. Because peace also can give them patience. Patience. It's tough to be patient, right? We live in a fast moving world where we want everything so fast. But Judge Galish reminded them, have some patience in heart. Don't be so much in hurry. Be patient. Patient is a good thing. When I first started driving, when I used to get to the light, once the light changes, I got ready to, to go. But the time came that I, someone told me, you need to just slow down a little bit because sometimes even the light changes, people are ready to go right so fast. So wait for a few seconds before you move. And those few seconds can be life or death. So not because the light changed that you're ready to go. Just give a few seconds, then you, you move on. I wonder in life sometimes we need to have that patience where we can just wait a little bit so we can be able to move on. Patience is a good fruit to have. That we patient with each other. Do patient run in the heart? Or do we want things so fast that we are not patient enough? was about kindness. So he started liberating some of the things that he needed to do to be kind to one another, kind before God, and kind to each other. Goodness or generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and then lastly he spoke about self-control. And self-control is one area that, that is also important. Because with all self-control, things can go down south. When feelings are not okay, what's about self-control? When to talk, when not to talk, 
when to react, when not to react. Self-control. What is bothering me? So, one of the fruit is self-control. As we live in this world, as we've been consumed by news and things around us, self-control comes in. When there's an overburden, self-control comes in. So, in short, he was reminding the church at Galatia that even though the opposite of the fruit is all kinds of things, the fleshy life, but besides the fleshy life, we also spoke about the spiritual life. And these are all fruit of the spiritual life that we all can look for and seek for. God, part of it comes from the spirit that doers within you. So let's remember, the commandment is based on love. Love your neighbor and love yourself. And spoke about freedom. It's good. Freedom is good. And then we spoke about the fruit of the spirit. The question for us today, are we going to depend on God's spirit to lead us to bear any fruit. Christ said, if you abide in me, you will bear much fruit, and this fruit comes from the Lord. May God reach the blessed out of us. Amen. Word of God, will you join me please in confessing the faith of the church? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the purchase pilot, was crucified, died, and was buried, and he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. They respond to the prayer that is here, our prayer. United in Christ, 
and guarded by the Spirit. We pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. God of faithfulness, set the face of the church firmly on you, rooted in your self-giving love. May the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and living life the hopes threatened by climate disaster. God of grace. God of peace, God all who govern, that they may place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Put their refugees and all who live on an oppression or conflict. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of kindness, review your healing presence to all who are sick or dying. Uphold those who grieve. Support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. God of grace. We lift everyone on Calvary prayer list and those we name in our hearts at this time, spoken or silently. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of love, attend to those who are struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work towards health, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of your joy in your presence. God of joy, we give you thanks for all who have died and now celebrate the inheritance of life in you. Keep their examples of faithfulness always before you, that we may trust in your promises in life and in death. God of everything and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts, in Jesus' name. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May we share God's peace with one another. Let us pray. O oh God of abundance, we thank you for that which you have provided. You have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right in our duty and our joy that we should all times in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life, and so with all of the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join on any hand.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to the disciples. Say, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shared for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Together as a body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. While sitting together, let's pray as Jesus taught his disciples, our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shared for you. Please stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a closer walk with me, friend to Jesus in my way. him walking close to me, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. I am weak, but you are. 
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.